From a supersized battleship to a supersized aircraft carrier, the 72,000 ton Shinano was like the Titanic of warships, larger than any of its class, heavily armed, and built to be impossible to sink. And, just like the Titanic, it sank on its maiden voyage, just days after leaving the harbor. <laughs> Japan built three enormous battleships during World War II. Two of them, the Yamato and the Musashi, were sunk in battle. The third one, the Shinano, was halted halfway through construction. Building the Shinano was done in secret at the Yokosuka Naval Arsenal. It was fenced in on three sides, and the workers were threatened with the death punishment if the secret ever got out. From Battleship to Supercarrier after the attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941, work on the Shinano was suspended. The Japanese began reconsidering whether battleships would still be worth the investment. Dive bombers and submarines could easily sink them, and aircraft carriers seemed more useful in battle because they could launch their own planes. At that time, the ship was less than halfway complete. After the Battle of Midway, Japan decided to convert the Shinano into an aircraft carrier to take the place of the four carriers the U.S. destroyed. Because it was originally designed as a battleship, it would be different from typical aircraft carriers of the Japanese fleet. It was much larger than any carrier they had ever built. Its flight deck was covered with armored plating and steel and could withstand 500-kilogram bombs dropped by enemy dive bombers. The Japanese engineers made extra precautions to protect this ship, like adding ventilation fans in case of a gas leak, an anti-torpedo bulge, and an armored belt. Because of its size and armored design, the Shinano would be used as a support carrier. It would serve as a refueling station and carry reserve aircraft and spare parts. Unlike the regular carriers, the Shinano's armored deck would be safe from bombs, so having the carrier planes land on its flight deck for refueling would let the regular carriers operate further away and spare them from damage. The ship was supposed to be finished by August 1945, but the deadline was moved earlier, to October 1944. The Japanese fleet suffered a severe blow during battles in the Marianas and the Philippines, and they direly needed aircraft carriers. So they rushed the construction, sacrificing quality for speed. In November 1944, the Shinano was spotted by a U.S. scout plane in the shipyard at Yokosuka. The ship's captain, Toshio Abe, was ordered to depart immediately before the U.S. could send its bombers. Captain Toshio asked permission to delay their departure because the ship was not yet ready. Some of the parts of the Shinano were not yet finished. The waterproof doors had not been installed, the compartments had not been tested for air leaks, and because of a design flaw, the joint between the upper hull and the armor belt underwater was vulnerable to torpedo attacks. The Shinano also did not have enough trained crew members available yet. Captain Toshio's request was denied. His superiors could not risk losing the ship to U.S. bombers flying over the area. So the Shinano set sail for the Kure Naval Base, 480 kilometers away in the dead of night with a crew of over 2,000. Many of them were untrained dock workers recruited at the last minute. Also aboard the Shinano were 50 Yokosuka MXY-7 Oka flying bombs, which were short-range piloted aircraft carrying explosives. They would be attached to bombers and released to crash land on target ships. There were also six Shinyo suicide motorboats on the deck. The Shinano was escorted by three destroyers but had no air support to protect it from submarines. At Kure, the final fittings would be installed and the Shinano would take the flying bombs to the Philippines and Okinawa. The Fateful Encounter On November 2nd, the Shinano detected the presence of the U.S. submarine Archerfish, which was patrolling Tokyo Bay. The captain of the submarine, John Enright, mistook it for a tanker because it was so huge. When he got closer, he realized it was a carrier, much, much larger than any he had ever seen. Captain Toshio feared the submarine was a decoy from a larger group of submarines, so he used zigzag maneuvers on maximum speed to evade them. But there were no other submarines, and all the zigzagging just slowed it down and gave the much slower archer fish a chance to keep up. Because of the rushed construction, Shinano's bearings began to overheat, forcing Captain Toshio to slow down even more. The archer fish submerged and waited for the perfect chance to attack. 
Then, Shinano made a turn that exposed its starboard to the submarine. The Archer fish fired six torpedoes at 3 a.m. Four of them hit the ship at its vulnerable side, right along the joint between the armored plating and the anti-torpedo bulge. The torpedoes flooded storage compartments, boiler rooms, an engine room, an oil tank, and a damage control station. With one fatal mistake, the third largest ship in the Japanese fleet was in danger of capsizing. The best thing to do would be to slow down to keep more water from entering the ship at an alarming rate, but Captain Toshio believed the damage was minimal because U.S. torpedoes at the time were not as strong as the ones used by the Japanese. He put the ship on maximum speed in case other submarines were waiting to attack. More water came rushing in, and the ship began to tilt as sailors frantically pumped out water. Before long, the water reached the engines. As the hours went by, Captain Toshio tried a desperate move. He flooded the other side of the ship to counterbalance the tilt. Then he had the Shinano towed by two destroyer escorts, the Hamakaze and Isokaze. But none of these worked. The towing cable snapped from the weight. By 10 in the morning, the Shinano was tilting 30 degrees starboard. There was no choice but to abandon ship. As the Shinano sank, it sucked in survivors trying to swim away. 1,435 died that day, including Captain Toshio, who chose to go down with his ship. The 1,080 survivors were quarantined at a nearby island until January the next year, so the news of the incident wouldn't reach the public. The American Navy themselves couldn't believe John Enright's claims until records of the missing supercarrier were found after the war. It was just unbelievable that one submarine could sink a ship that huge and powerful. The Shinano was the largest aircraft carrier sunk during the war, and the largest warship ever sunk by a submarine, just 10 days into its very first voyage.